Hi everyone, my name is Kelly Hood and I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Optic Cyber Solutions. I've been hearing a lot of confusion lately around NIST SP800-171, specifically I've been getting questions like what is it for, when do I need it, what version do I use, and how does it relate to CMMC? So we decided to put together a few videos to break down these concepts and try to clarify what SP800-171 is for and when you need it. Today, I want to focus specifically on Revision 2, which was released back in 2020, because there are many requirements and regulations that are still mandating it today. NIST did just release SP800-171 Rev 3 back in May of 2024, and my colleague Tom Conkle put out a great overview of some of the key uh, differences, so be sure to check that out in the video notes below. So let's start with the questions, what is it and why was it created? NIST SB800-171 is for protecting controlled unclassified information, or CUI, in non-federal systems and organizations. Since the controlled unclassified information is unclassified, uh, US government information requiring safeguarding and controlling, this document defines the minimum requirements for protecting it to ensure its confidentiality when it's stored, processed, or transmitted outside of those government systems. Additionally, if you're familiar with the NIST SP-853 control sets, which includes security and privacy controls for information systems and organizations, uh, know that 171 is essentially a subset of those broader controls, pulling out the requirements focused on confidentiality rather than covering the other key pillars of cybersecurity like availability and integrity as well. When you take a look at the document, there are some key terms you'll want to be aware of, and you'll find that there's a structured approach for organizing the requirements in a hierarchy. The top level of this hierarchy is the families, and this includes concepts like access control, incident response, and physical protections. These families are used to group similar requirements, which then get broken down into specific requirements, which say things like control the flow of CUI in accordance with approved authorizations. And then we can break it down even further into assessment objectives that tell us how we know when we've achieved the requirement. And these are much more specific and say things like information flow control policies are defined and designated sources and destinations like networks, individuals, and devices for CUI within the system is identified. Now, the assessment objectives aren't actually in the NIST SP-800-171 document. They're actually in a supplementary document, NIST SP-800-171A, for assessing security requirements of controlled and classified information, that I wanted to make sure to point out. This supplementary document helps provide clarity on how to evaluate the requirements in the primary document and determine if the intent of those requirements are being met. This is especially important for anyone that has a mandate for meeting 171 requirements through some type of regulatory requirements, such as the DOD Federal Acquisition Regulation, DFARS, or the CMC program. Also, 171A includes assessment procedures and guidance for how to evaluate the requirements through three different methods, including examining evidence, interviewing stakeholders, or testing systems. And you can also use this information as you implement the requirements to help figure out what you should put in place. These assessments can be conducted in many different ways depending on your organization's needs. This can range from self-assessments to independent third-party assessments or even government-sponsored assessments. So to bring it back to the concepts included in NIST SP-800-171, I wanted to highlight the families and illustrate the types of topics included to ensure the confidentiality of the controlled and classified information. Revision 2 of the document includes 14 families that you can see here, which are broken down into 110 security requirements and 320 assessment objectives. These families focus on everything from managing user and system access and access control, to ensuring systems are configured securely and configuration management, to password complexity and identification and authentication, and even into conducting background checks and personnel security. Definitely take a closer look and dig into the requirements. And if there are any of these that are jumping out as particularly confusing or unclear, I'd love to hear from you. At Optic, we've been working with companies to implement these requirements and prepare companies for assessments and regulatory mandates, and have been able to see how a wide variety of businesses have implemented these security measures in a way that both meets the intent and minimizes the effect on their business. So as you get started, I wanted to provide you with a few resources that you can see here on the screen, and all are included in the video notes below. 
I have links to all of the NIST publications that I mentioned here, but also included a free resource that Optic Cyber Solutions has available. It's our NIST SP800-171 Rev2 profile template. And it provides a great way to start capturing what you're doing today in relation to each of the requirements and to start identifying areas where you may have gaps. We've also seen this as a great tool for jumpstarting the development of an SSP or a system security plan. So definitely check it out and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Again, my name is Kelly Hood and I'd love to hear from you with any questions or recommendations for future videos. Thanks. Optic Cyber Solutions strives to help organizations identify and address their blind spots through our assessment, implementation, and advising services. For more information about Optic Cyber Solutions and our services, reach out at info at or check out our website at OpticCyber.com.